Hello, my Hex brothers and sisters. Today I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. It's a secret about the ideal strategy about how to do Hex the right way. Assuming that you and I have similar goals, aspirations, dreams, strengths, weaknesses, time horizons, and ability to think. So I'm wearing my uh, camo blue jacket today in case I have to avoid any predators in an aquatic environment. You never know these days. So I'm on the Hex website, right? And I'm going to tell you what I see happening. And this is going to be pretty honest advice about the right way to play the Hex game from my opinion. This is financial advice. I'm telling you what to do. But in the description, I'm going to say that I'm not a financial advisor because I, I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to go to jail. All right, so look what's happening in Hex, right? The supply on day one in the adoption amplifier was 1 billion. And Richard did that to counteract people over FOMOing day one. Well, that shit didn't work. <laughs> because y'all over FOMOed way too much day one. Now, me, I'm smarter than most people, but I'm still pretty retarded. And that's because on day two, I thought I'd be smart and wait till day two to buy in. So I over FOMO'd on day two, right? And I, I blew my load one day too late. Uh, one day late, but still too early, I guess I would say. So I guess instead of being the equivalent of a one pump chump, I was a two pump chump. But I'm not mad about it. Because I still got a little bit of bag of ETH. And I'm waiting and I'm seeing the trend is emerging here as we're on day 29. And you can see the trend, right? If you look at these numbers right in front of your face, you can see the chart. Uh, you know, you got 47 ETH, 47,000 hex you got on day one. And that number has been increasing steadily since then with minor variations, right? So... We're finally getting into the consistent millions, where for the first time since launch, we've had over a million hacks available on day one. And not to mention 20% more if you self-refer yourself, because that's still a thing, even though Richard made it harder. But I'm going to let you in on all the secrets today about how to maximize potential, right? So I'm going to be straight up with you that... You can still self-refer yourself. I think the cookie time limit uh, was way, is way lower now. I think the cookies expire sooner. But you just got to make sure you keep refreshing your own cookie. If you don't know how to do that, just control F12 that shit. Go to your developer tools and go to go.hex.win. Uh, it's under the application tab of the developer tools. And you can check out your cookies. And you can see your cookies that are tracking you all over the website. And ideally, there would be a name of a cookie that says A and a name that says R. And you want to make sure that you have the R and the A both referring to your own Ethereum address. I don't have them here because I'm not using my typical adoption amplifier browser, but that's step one in making sure you get the maximum value out of your adoption amplifier strategy, okay? You can still help self-refer yourself, and I highly recommend that you refer other people too that aren't as smart and that aren't watching this video right now. Now let's go into the best data that we have about how this might perform in the future. And Richard was nice enough to provide us with all this data handed over on a silver platter for us to ignore and over FOMO on day one. So here's the data that we all ignored, myself included. ETH to EOS, right? If EOS was undergoing its launch phase, if we could do EOS all over again, we would see that you got the most ETH per EOS immediately after the launch. 
and then there's a general lull, right? So people paid more ETH per EOS at around day, looks like day 10 or something, day, day 7 maybe. Which means EOS was the most expensive on day 7 after launch. Now EOS did things a little bit differently with a more of a constant supply decrease of EOS throughout the entire 350 days. And Hex had a basically a double input on day one and then about a halvening almost on day two and above. Now when people free claim, the supply of Hex available also decreases, which is why you could see we went from 512 million Hex available to 511 million Hex available. And that's based on the amount of people that free claim. But what we can see is that, like the adoption amplifier, the free claim people over FOMO'd on day one too. So everyone over FOMO'd on day one, and now we're getting some people reclaiming, but not enough to make the available hex per day go down significantly. Okay. So I hope that makes sense, and I hope I'm explaining that to the best of my ability. But here, if we're following what ETH did in terms of EOS, we can see that after the initial splooge, we had a little bit of a refractory period, if you will, up until about day 50 to day 150. And so this kind of golden range right here is where you got the most, you spent the least EOS per ETH. And on the inverse side of that, you got the most EOS per ETH. You spent the least ETH per ETH. Let me say that right. In this golden window right here, you spent the least ETH per EOS. And conversely, you got the most EOS per ETH, which we could see by this large scatter plot where you got about 700 EOS for one ETH on day 120. So we can reasonably assume that this is how the psychology of a market reacts to a launch phase like this. And it kind of makes sense, right? There's a hype cycle. There's an over FOMO day one. And then there's a general lull in the golden range, what I'm calling day 50 to day 150. And then people start finding out about it again. And the virality increases. You can see here from day 150 up until the end of the launch phase of EOS, it actually wasn't that good of a deal anymore. And really the ideal time to get in was between 50 and 150. And that's due to the, the virality of the project, right? So we've already had the initial launch phase. We've had weeks one through one and two of people, everyone put out their scam video to get their views on YouTube. Everyone wanted to uh, call Hex a scam, and they did. And now they can forget about it again until Hex gets so popular that they're going to come back. And they'll come back later. These Hex scam people, they're going to come back later on, and they're either going to be, they're either going to have changed their attitude a little bit, or they're going to double down on their Hex is a scam narrative. And that'll be fun. That'll be funny. Um, but we'll see. Mark my words, you'll see a lot of people changing their mind. Now here's one thing that I want to really emphasize. Now here's Hexstat.com, right? So Hexstat.com is it's really fucking brilliant. We're going to go down here and we're going to take a look at, I like this chart the best, Hex Staked that's expiring by day. And you'll see the biggest spike that we have in this chart is on day, so day three, Ah, it's hard to tell exactly. Day 321, it seems like. And so, the reason that that is, is because the majority of people that free claimed were auto-staked for 350 days. And those 350 day people are all expiring in probably around days 350 to 360, right? Because we know that most people claim their free Bitcoin in the first 10 days or so. You can see that bulk of uh, area of pink area on the graph right there. And you could also see that a smart couple of individuals are ending their stake around day 325. And why do you think that is? There's a, there's a billion hacks expiring on day 325. 
That's because of a thing called the big payday combined with the 90% auto stakes expiring between day 350 and day 360. And big payday three happen happens on day 353. Now these two things combined means that people are going to try to FOMO in last minute because they know that on the big payday, they get a lot more hex. And they're not thinking about the fact that this hex is going to dilute the supply. They're just thinking, oh, as long as I'm staked during this time, I get a lot of numbers added to my account. And so people are going to go full retard about day 350 to day 360. Um, and what I think you should do, if I'm being totally honest, and some people might not like me telling you guys this, but I think you should save about 10% of your stack and not actually uh, stake it and keep that stack, keep that 10% liquid and try to dump earlier than the big payday and earlier than the 90% auto stakes expiring because a lot of people are going to be buying during days two, let's say 250 to 320. And a lot of people are going to be wanting to buy to get their their big payday bonus. And a lot of people are going to be expiring right after day 353. And they might just dump. People are not always that smart. And if you can dump when the supply and the, de sorry, when the demand is increasing drastically in those day 250 to day 300 type of days, you can immediately buy right back after it dumps. Um, let's say on day 370. Now, due to the pump mentals, it's not going to dump that much, but I still think that the pump mentals are not going to be enough to save people from themselves, so to speak. So I hope that makes sense. And that's what I'm doing. I'm also laddering. So in the real world, people do a thing called CD laddering. CD laddering is when you have consecutive stakes that expire in incremental time periods. So I chose my time period increments of 50 days and I have stake, stakes expiring every 50 days from years 2021 to 20, I don't know, 25 or something like that. But um, you know, I'm not going to show you them, but I'll just tell you what I'm doing and you can believe me or not. So I'm laddering because I think laddering is smart because you really never know what the price is going to do. And you might want some longer term and you might want some shorter term. And you can't really guess when the next bull market is going to happen. But the reason that I'm laddering is because I am literally going to tr try to time the next peak of the bull market. And the great thing about laddering is that you don't have to pick one specific date to bet all your marbles on. You can actually ladder in and I can ladder between, let's say, year 2022 and 2024. And as long as I believe that the next bull market is going to happen in the next two and a half years, somewhere around two to four years from now. And you might have heard Richard mention that it's designed to go 10x in two and a half years. So I think that two and a half year mark might be a smart kind of uh, number to keep in your head. And if you want to get specific, two, two and a half years is about 900 days, give or take. It's actually not that specific, but about 900 days, I think, might be the optimal peak. But just in case I'm wrong, I have stakes expiring both before and after the 900 days. So I can be wrong, and I can still sell and make my mad gains. And as Richard has been saying, everything in crypto is subject to crazy high pumps and then 80 to 90% drawdowns. And these 80, 80 to 90% drawdowns happen every three to four years. So if you're not ready for that kind of thing, if this is your first rodeo too, uh, try not to be surprised when 80% of your stack is uh, gone and try to sell before then. I don't like it. I don't like that people have to have the mental torment of losing that much money, but that's the way it is. And because I've been in this for so long, I'm okay with the, the mental... Uh, toll that that takes on your mind. To me, it actually isn't so bad. So I'm just trying to warn all of you about what to expect. Okay. So ideal stake length is around 900 days, ideally to time with the peak of the next bull market. 
And Richard says himself that uh, crypto goes through these cycles, right? And even Bitcoin, the big kahuna, is affected by these cycles. So don't think that Hex is going to be any different. It's not just going to be a magic coin that goes straight up because there's still human beings involved. And human beings are not rational. So if crypto is going down, people are going to sell their hex. People are going to emergency unstake. People are going to do unwise things uh, because emotions make people act irrationally. So what's the plan after the after I try to time the bull market? Well, I'm going to try to buy back in at a much lower price and then hopefully stake just for the long term and have a kind of perpetual income machine. And because I know hex will be around forever, I'm going to use... I'm going to take a lot of my mad gains and I'm going to plan on my next aspirations afterwards, which I will not be going into right here, but I'm going to take my mad gains and I'm going to reinvest maybe like 10%, 20% back into Hex and Bitcoin, assuming they're both going to be more stable stores of value in the future. And I'm going to let that ride and hopefully that'll be generational wealth for the future, right? Sounds crazy, but... Hey, we're in crypto. We're all crazy. So that is my plan. And what I want to emphasize is that you cannot lose sight of what mad gains means. It means mad gains in U.S. dollar terms. At least it does right now because we're not basing the price of a gallon of milk in Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is not the medium of, ex of exchange, nor is it the store, the unit of account. It's a store of value, but it's not even the store of value. It's just a store of value. So Bitcoin is not money. It's not, it's not global money yet. But what you need to realize is that what does mad gains mean to you? To me, mad gains still means U.S. dollar cost, U.S. dollar gains. So don't lose sight of what we're in this for and define what success looks like to you. Uh, I'm a product manager in my day job, and one thing that we advise companies to always do is to define what success looks like to them. A lot of companies will tell us, hey, I want to make an app. And we say, why? And they say, because everyone else is making an app. And well, that's not necessarily the right reason to be in something. So you need to define what success looks like to you as an individual, as a self-sovereign individual, and define what failure looks like to you and act accordingly. So have a great day, bros, and I'll talk to you later.